Welcome to the Reims Cathedral. My name is Amy and I'm going to be giving you a guided tour around the church. The cathedral has a long and storied history that dates back to the 13th century and stretches all the way into World War I and includes many memorable figures of history including at least 25 French kings and even Joan of Arc. The site that the cathedral stands on, however, dates back long before the church we see today was constructed. The history of this site goes back to the 5th century when St. Nicasius founded a church where the cathedral now stands today. But I'll talk more about that in a minute. Through the following centuries, the original building was altered by several of the archbishops of Reims. On May 6, 1210, the original cathedral was destroyed by a fire on the feast day of St. John. A year later, in 1211, construction began on a new structure. Its completion took over a hundred years and was again greatly damaged by a fire in 1481. Much like the recent fire at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, the structure's attic caught fire causing the lead of the roof to melt and the destruction of the framework, central bell tower, and upper galleries at the base of the roof. The French kings Charles VIII and Louis XII funded the cathedral's reconstruction. Over the next few centuries, features like the addition of the French kings on its facade were added. The structure we see today was restored after the cathedral was yet again badly damaged during the German bombings of World War I. Each of the two towers you see stand at 266 feet tall, although they were originally designed to stand at 390 feet tall. The south tower holds two great bells. One of them was named Charlotte by Charles, Cardinal of Lorraine in 1570 and weighs more than 10 tons. The cathedral's exterior glorifies royalty, something that was a predominant focus after Charles VIII and Louis XII funded its reconstruction in the 15th and 16th centuries. In the center of the front facade, above the rose window is the Gallery of Kings, which is composed of 56 statues, each standing at 15 feet tall and in total weigh four tons. Clovis I is located in the center, mid-baptism, and he is flanked by the statues of all of his successors. Outside one of the main doors on the right-hand side of the cathedral also stands the icon of the cathedral, which is the smiling angel statue. During World War I, her head fell down, and in the war's aftermath, there was a great celebration when her head was finally reattached, as it symbolized to the city that they were finally recovering from World War I. Also during World War I, some of the celebrated stained glass windows, including the North Rose window from the cathedral's original 13th century structure, were spared by a family of local glassmakers who meticulously took some of the windows apart, piece by piece, so they could hide them and protect them from the bombing. These 12th generation glassmakers then helped to restore the original glass into the newly rebuilt cathedral and replaced the windows that were destroyed beyond repair with close records. Now you're probably wondering, out of all the places in France at the time, why was Reims selected as the site of this cathedral? It all traces back to the belief by the French kings that their rule was ordained by God. Clovis I, the king of the Franks and the first king of France, was baptized here in St. Nicasius' original church around 498 CE. Afterwards, the site was declared a sacred ground for royals and became the traditional location for the coronations of the kings of France. We'll talk more about this as we head inside. 